Alright, Parashat Chukat. Parashat Chukat. What does it talk about? Yes. 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 The para. The para again. <laughs> Red heifer. Alright. So I don't know. I don't want to talk about parashat. About the para to the cows. I'm I'm a vegan, so you know I can't. I don't speak about cows. Anyway, so parashat Chukat. Interesting enough, is uh, so called. Immersed all with water. There's a certain uh, uh, thread that goes throughout the whole entire parasha. That's the issue of the water. It starts with what we call mechatat, which purify the uh, the person from tumat met. And later on, we had the mei uh, meriva, the water of uh, uh, argumental water, so called. And at the end of the parasha, we have shirat be'er. The uh, praise for the whale of uh, Miriam and so on and so forth. So let's see if there is if there is a uh, is there is any ground is there a real solid uh, connection here in the, in this uh, water issue. Uh, let's see how it stands at that time, and maybe we could learn something for our times as well. So in Sefer Gvurat Hashem, the Maharal in uh, Perek Yudchet says, uh, he, ex- he tries to explain the name of Moshe Rabbeinu. And it says, Moshe Rabbeinu was called like this, Ki min hamayim meshitihu, because I pulled them out of the water, right? Well, where are my glasses? See, always like this. So, it's really, I mean, he wasn't in the water, he wasn't the teva that was in the water, but min hamayim meshitihu. You should know that everything in the Torah, of course, has many different layers and aspects to it. So we'll try to take a different, a different look to, to fold a different layer and we'll see what we're talking about. And so the Maharal says the following, Omerani, and I'm quoting, and he says, Kishem Moshe, the name of Moshe, Moses, right, Moshe, who hora'a alinkar inyan Moshe umalato, the main uh, 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 hint here of the name of Moshe is on the essence of Moshe and on his level. Asheru mesulak umusar minamayim, which is removed from the water. Veze and that is ki amayim el hem tsura omedet kayemet. Water has no shape, right, Sam? As Bruce Lee says, Bruce Libowitz. What did he say? You put the water in the cup, becomes the cup. You put the water in the teapot, it becomes the teapot. Water has no shape. And Kmoshit Bayer Lemala, it's El Kol Haben, Hayelod, Hayeora Tashlicheu, as explained previously in reference to the, to the decree that Paro had over the people, any son that would be any male boy that would be, and yeah, usually males are boys, yeah, yeah. but any, any, any male baby that will be born, you throw him into the you know, river Nile. Kisham heirachnu bezer over there, if you want to look, and I do recommend you guys to look, look over there, it's very fascinating. Vikasher teda ze, when you understand that, teda lecha, you would know, ki ma'alat Moshe Rabbeinu alav shalom the level of Moshe Rabbeinu, ki... Ma'alat atzura lefi shayan nivdal b'ma'alato min ha'chomer. Moshe Rabbeinu was separated from materialism. He was removed and separated from materialism, from chomer, matter. Ki aschalim ha'nivdalim hem tzura bilvad. Umi shu karov el ma'alat aschalim hu karov el atzura. Ve'lekach, and therefore, Moshe Rabbeinu alav ha'shalom, inyan tzura bilvad belo chomer. Moshe Rabbeinu was basically not involved in materialistic aspects. He was all, in a way, spiritual and spirituality. Can I get a tissue somewhere, please? Can I get a, give me a tissue? And it says, Vehamayim. What are you doing? I said a tissue. I didn't. Uh, it's okay. Can I get a tissue? Get a tissue. Good thing I didn't ask you for a gun or something, you know. Excuse me. He says, "Ve'amayim hem ha'efech." The water is the opposite. Amayim elam tsuagmura. For example, if you take this uh, beautiful chopsticks, right, right, 
So there is a shape to it. The cup has a shape to it. The water has no shape of its own. That's why water in Israel, in Israel, water in Hebrew is always plural. Noun count noun, but it's always plural. We don't say ma'im echad, ma'im rabim. Ma'im is plural. Water is what? Water is or water are? Water is in English. Water in Hebrew will be water are. And there's a big issue with this. Why? It says, "Lefi shekol achdut mikoach atzura ha'meachad et adavar ve'amayim ablit zura gmoa." There is something that puts it together. The water is a certain complete form that is united and put together. Ve'lefikach ha'mayim she'em ablit zura mekuyemet bilshon rabim ve'aya Moshe ha'efech la'em she'utzura nivdelet. Moshe was completely separate, so therefore water becomes one, right? Moshe Rabbeinu was completely separated from this form, from that, from that idea. Our earlier sages divided reality, and that's what we keep saying all the time. One of the areas of mistakes for the modern Jew, or maybe to some Jews throughout history, is the way they view the world. What do I mean? Most people view the world based on their culture and so on and so forth. So an American views the world different than a Japanese, different than a Saudi, and so on and so forth. The world wants to do this globalization of putting everybody together so we can all think the same way. The Jew is different in that perspective because the point of view of the Jew is not cultural, the point of view of the Jew is halachic. The Jew should align his thought according to the view of halacha. Because since we are commanded to do the mitzvot, it will be impossible for us to do the mitzvot unless we have this view, the sight, the ability to see it, this perspective. For example, in today's day and age, in today's day and age, right? In today's day and age, uh, for example, uh, homosexuality is being is being uh, viewed as X, whatever that is, and it keeps changing based on, of course, on a small minority. You know, that keeps on implanting their ideas and agendas through everybody and, you know, the silence of spiral, spiral, you know, whatever, as we talked about it previously. However, if I say, for example, that I don't approve of homosexuality, right away you will put your finger on me and you say, oh, you're a homophobe. I'm not a homophobe. I'm not a phobe of nothing. Maybe I am phobic about stupidity. So I'm a stupidity with phobe. I'm not a homophobe. I'm not afraid of anyone. I don't feel threatened by anyone. However, halachically, my view of the world is as different, is a little bit different than the rest of the people. So when you try to all of a sudden apply the world's view to the halacha, you distort halacha and you stray away from the, from the path in which the Torah had prescribed us. Once you stray away from that, it's not that the Torah and Halakha does not evolve. Halakha and Torah always evolve according to its natural evolvement. However, once you start to, to drift away, you are eventually going to drift into other territories that are absolutely nothing to do with halacha and will be eventually far away and far removed from Judaism. I mean, we're not talking about something that's going to happen in the next five years. However, your, your, uh, your actions would manifest themselves into something completely different further down the road, 50 years from now. I'm not quite sure if you'll start drifting away if your offsprings are going to be Jewish. Very simple. That's why it's very important to stay connected to halacha and to understand it 
and to be very, very careful from adopting foreign ideas that might seem exciting and, and thrilling. However, the Jew have nothing to do with them. Absolutely nothing. You have to be very careful then. I'm not saying, for example, that a homosexual is a bad person. I would say his behavior is inappropriate. We should separate the person from his behavior. The person could be a very nice person, you know. He lets people through. Not, he is a person, he's a nice person. His behavior is that what I have a problem with. And halakhically, that behavior is bad. I'm not afraid of anybody. There's nothing to be afraid of. So. You should understand that. So Chazal, Chachamim, told us that reality has, and I don't want to sound too Taoistic in terms of that, but reality has two components to it. And one is the Chomer, the raw material, and the other one is Tzura, shape. Okay? The Chomer is the, what we call the, the raw materials, the, the essence of the, the material itself. And the tsura, as as it is, is the form is the formation that the chomer, that the material appears in. Okay. So therefore, the shape, the formation, is a form of of creation. Is what we because it says, "Who Hakadosh Baruch Hu created men, kimi afar I created you from dirt, from earth." I have allergies, it's terrible. And putting the ruach, putting the spirit into the materialistic, that's what gives the chomer, gives the raw material its shape and its unique name. But it's very important to call names appropriately. You have to think very carefully before you give your son or your daughter a name. <laughs> My allergies are horrendous. I don't, I don't know what's wrong with me. Anyway, so maybe it's from the Delaware you brought this stuff. <laughs> so if we said the water, so if we talk about the water, water is chomer. Water is chomer without tzura, without shape. But Moshe Rabenu is tzura, is formation, without chomer, which is the opposite of water completely. And we'll see if, hopefully we'll finish. It's going to be a little late, but, you know, whatever. So let's talk about Mei Meriva, the water of, of argu the arguments that they had over that. The Tikkune Zohar, you see, we are all over the place today. Tikkune Zohar in Tikkun Chaf Aleph, Daf Mem Daled, in the Tirgum of the Sulam, Bala Sulam Ashlag says, Vayachet asea betasela bemateu pa'amayim. And he hit the rock with his staff twice. Excuse me, Moshe Rabbeinu was practicing Kung Fu. So he hit one, two. He hit the, you see, you, that's why you need to practice, right? He hit it twice. Why? Moshe Rabbeinu doesn't just do things without thinking. He knows exactly what he's doing. So not only you hit it once, why, why Michlat did you hit it? Kadosh Baruch Hu said to you, talk to it. And not only you hit it, you hit it twice. So it says, She'im lo haya makeh, over there in Tikkun Ezoar, im lo haya makeh bo, lo hayu torchim Yisrael ve'atanaim ve'ha'emoraim b'torah she'be'al peh she'hi se'la. If it wasn't for Moshe hitting the rock, all the Tanaim, all the Moraim, including you, would not be able to be Torah, to labor over the Torah, because the Torah is called Selah, it's like a rock. But we say, Mefotzet Slaim, right? Hapatisha Chazak, the sledgehammer, when we give a title to a rabbi. Right, where he said, Oh, a patisha chazak, mefotzet slaim. He's the sledgehammer who, who grinds and breaks stones. 
סלע is, is the Torah. אלא נאמר בו, he says, ודיברתם אל הסלע לעיניהם ונתן מימיו, and you should speak to the rock in front of Am Yisrael, and the rock should bring the, give the, the water. בלי טרחה, without any effort, just talk and the water will come out. That's what Kadosh Baruch Hu told Moshe and Aaron, right? And Moshe Rabbeinu doesn't do that. והיה מתקיים בהם מה שכתוב, ולא ילמדו עוד איש את רעהו ואיש את אחיו לאמור דעו את השם, כי כולם ידעו אותי למקטנם ועד גדולם. If they would not do that, if they would do that, everybody would know Hashem, there would be a big kiddush Hashem, גזונת ההי, הכל טוב ויפה, good bye and good luck. והיה יוצא מימה של תורה ברור בלי קושייה ובלי מחלוקת ובלי פסק. And from that point and on, hey, Mr. Sushi himself. This is again the Ilui Nishmat. What do we say? Bechor? Bechor Chai Ben? No, Demekare Boris Ben Frecha. Ben Frecha. Mitkareze, we write Gitim, Oktuba. Bori Chai Ben Frecha. So. Afilu lo karu lo kaha? Afilu lo karu lo kaha. Hashem yodea mize. Shalach umrim eze kaha zerak le anashim, shemishu yida. Bashamayim yodim akol. Imagine the Torah, you learn Torah, you open the Gemara, no kushiyot, no machlokot, no abayen rava, no nothing. Not only then, no Rambam and Rava, no Reef, no, nothing. It's all the same, identical, it would just be like this, halakha, it would be very boring. I mean, think about this. I mean, we just sit here, we read a book, okay? Even in the Shulchan Haruch, Maran brings Omrim, Yesh Omrim, Yesh Ve Yesh Omrim. And we labor over this. And look what, we would have, what would have happened to us if we would not have labored over the Torah, how we would actually make a Kinyan, it would be like, just like reading a book. Just like reading a book. How many Chinese people you think read the, the I Ching daily in their lifespan? A Jew cannot do so. So Moshe Rabbeinu, look, but the Baal Sulam sent to us based on Tikkunei Azor is a tremendous, tremendous thing that Moshe Rabbeinu did to sacrifice himself for the future generation, for us to be able to learn Torah. Um, I'm not done yet. Wait. Okay. Okay. Fine. So what does that mean that Hashem didn't foresee that and have a plan for us, and Moshe had to step in and do it? That's that's the uh, that's the room that Kadosh Baruch Hu allows. It's a very good question. And that's the room that Kadosh Baruch Hu allows every person to do above and beyond. That's what Moshe Rabbeinu did here, Lifni Mishuat Adin. And that's what we all expected to do so. That's only, Moshe Rabbeinu basically sacrificed, and we'll see later on, sacrificed basically his, his arrival to Eretz Israel. He sacrificed him and Aaron for the well-being of Am Israel in the future. And that's Lifni Mishuat Adin. You don't have to do so, but you did so. Okay? So when Chazal look, and when, when we look at things, we need to look at things internally, not only on the surface. And that's what we try to do so all the time. So they see that unique uh, uh, situation of, of Moshe in front of the, of the, of the stone, of the, of the rock, as a historical event which is going to determine the future lives, the way of life of the Jews, the way they're going to learn, Torah, and this is an unbelievable point. We never looked at this like this. We always think that Moshe had some kind of like uh, learning disability. You know, he told him left, he went right. He told him speak, he hid. Moshe lost it, Moshe didn't lose it. All of a sudden, we have a tremendous revelation of the greatness of Moshe Rabbeinu for what he has done for us. That's the beauty of a leader. That sacrifice himself for the well-being of his people. If you have a person who calls himself your leader, that puts himself at the top of the priority, remove him. The leader sacrifice himself for the well-being of the people. 
then he's worthy to be called a leader. That's Moshe Rabbeinu. Rabbeinu is our leader. So, and it seems that uh, it seems that Chazal see with this parasha in such a way, because that parasha, in a way, introduce us to the preparation of entering Am Yisrael. And that's very important to, to understand that. So, and you should see that in every, every uh, new period, a new era, there is an opportunity to go to what we say to Bereshit, to the beginning. We, we have a new start. I mean, look at this. Even if we talk about the secular state of Israel as, a, as an entity, look at what opportunity we had here and we missed. We missed. To the point that sometimes it's easier for a Jew to become observant or to remain observant outside of Israel. We missed a historical opportunity with the state of Israel. We missed. I'm sorry. The state of Israel is a complete secular entity that is not interested in preserving the historical aspect of Am Israel as it manifests itself from, it, from the Torah and the Halakha, but rather tries to create a new entity that is called a secular Israeli entity, not a Jewish entity. Unfortunately, If you don't believe me, read. Read Israeli newspapers. The problem is that, you know, some of our brethren who are observant in Israel take part in this big carnival, in this big circus that's called the Israeli politics. Of course, it's like anything else. There's money and there's power and there's this and there are titles and there's this chief, that's one, and the other one chief, the other one. And so everybody, so you, you might think everybody's like a Native American chief here. Chief Rabbi, Chief uh, Gladiator, Chief, you know, Chief Tatanka, you know. Titles, we love that. It's a missed opportunity. But in every new era, there is an opportunity to go back to the beginning. To fix the reality and to start a new life who is going to be complete life and fixed life. Look, pick one already. It's chopstick for crying out loud. It's not a kala. <laughs> now, however, the his history teaches us, <laughs> history teaches us that usually choosing it is in a very difficult way. If we're talking about from the Chet of Gan Eden, of Adam Rishon, through Matan Torah, and the Chet of Diego, and, and entering our Israel, I mean, Eretz Israel, the land of Israel, and the destruction of the temple. And by the way, the second temple was not, it was maybe more glorious. And that's what we're talking about. We're talking about shape and, and, and formation. It was more externally, more beautiful and elaborate than the first one. But in the first one, it was holier. It's not how beautiful it looks. It's how holy it is. So, also here in Memei Riva, in the, in the, when they had the, uh, the, the claiming against uh, Kadosh Baruch Hu and the whole uh, rock uh, situation, that there was an, a missed opportunity and a, and a tremendous historical missed opportunity. And we need to understand in the way what was the sin of Moshe Rabbeinu and why was Moshe Rabbeinu, I mean, if he did such a wonderful thing, why Moshe Rabbeinu was sentenced not to enter Eretz Israel? Right? So we need to understand that. Now you need to understand the following. The life of a Jew has to have a strong 
spiritual component to it. And I'll explain to you. To a Jew, spirituality is a must. If you don't get your dosage of spirituality from Judaism, the way we get it, you would find it in other places. It doesn't make a difference how crooked that is. But you need your spirituality. A Jew needs a certain amount of spirituality. Now, if you don't get it through, through learning Gemara and so on, since you need it, you might find yourself becoming the head of Hare Krishna, you know? But you need your spirituality. And that's the Jew everywhere. In Israel, in the land of Israel, when Am Israel lives in Israel, that life over there, and that's something that you need to think about it. Those of you who have been to Israel or, or have an experience with Israel or Israelis, you have to understand that life over there demand a complete dedication to what we call materialistic life. Believe it or not. Why? Because it's the Pasuk says, Kitavo aretz unetatem kol etz. You come into the land, why don't you say that Kadosh Baruch Hu right away? Gotta start working. Plant trees. It doesn't say Kitavo aretz. And you open kolel and yeshivot and start you know collecting tzedaka and uh, and medicate. No, it doesn't say plant trees right away. And it says v'chitavo milchama ba'atzachem and a war is going to come to your land. You have to fight. And there is your private parnasa in which you have to deal, and you have to deal about issues of the of the nation and so on and so forth. You need to have an army. To be protected from the from the from from enemies, and that also brings you to be connected to the land of Israel. However, the job of the spiritual leadership of Am Israel is to give a shape to this materialistic endeavor. Tzura. I mean, what will be the difference? As they say, Hem Ratzim Ve'anu Ratzim. They are running and we are running. Okay? When we say, Siyum Masechet. We are working, they are working. But your work has a totally different focal point. When you are working, you should work so you could learn. You don't learn so you can work. In other words, when you want to become a rabbi, you can get a job. And you're not learning because you want to really care about the you, you have a problem here. Better off you go to work so you can learn than learn so you can work. So the, there is such thing as a spiritual leadership. And their job is not to create a job to their families. Not to create protection over there and giving hechsherim and all kind, of, all kind of monkey business. The job of the spiritual leadership of Am Yisrael, especially in the land of Israel, is to give those materialistic life over there, or this, this endeavor that we're involved with, to give it a shape, a tzura, to form it into something different so we won't be like the rest of the nations. Because we are Jews and we are required to live in one way. So you need to understand. And that, by the way, applies also here. The leaders that we have, our congregational rabbis, our Baitedin, and so on and so forth, are they involved in, in a task of forming their communities into something more authentically Jewish? Are they giving it a holy formation? Or are they just there to encourage the people so they can give more donations, so they can get more money to the pockets? That's how you measure the quality of the leaders that you have. And that's the job over there. That is very important in Israel. Why? Because Eretz Israel is a totally different place. You have to be super careful over there. 
Here in Chutz Laaretz, you are careful because you know you're not going to keep it. You're not going to keep Torah and Mitzvot. What will happen to you? Well, you'll, you know, if not you, your children, but without a doubt, your grandchildren are going to be uh, in danger of existential danger of, of, of not become remaining Jews. However, when you're in Israel, one can say, I'm in Israel, I don't have to do this. When my father... By the way, should we have a refuash lema? G'dayim morel ben Matilda. When my father came to Israel as a nine-year-old kid, they sent him alone in Aliyat Noar. They told him, Habibi, you don't need anything. Everything that you have from Chutz it's throw away. Throw your clothes, throw your food. You don't need anything. They told my uncle, throw his filling. He threw his filling off the boat. You don't need it. You're now it's Israel. The Mashiach time. That's the danger of Mashiach. You don't need it. That's what they told a lot of kids at the time. You know, they show Shabbat is for Chutz Laaretz. Shabbat is not for Israel. That leadership at the time of Israel destroyed, or at least tried to destroy, the identity of its people. But Baruch Hashem, it didn't happen. It happened to some people, to great chunks of, of the Jewish people, but Baruch Hashem, we're coming back. Slowly, slowly. Not enough. But slowly, slowly. So that's the job of our leadership over there. And, and to take this, in, in other words, when we say to give shape, it is to give a spiritual meaning through all the mundane actions that we do throughout the day, and even when you do business and you build houses and you build bridges and you do roads, it should be all, akol, lefi darkash Torah, according to the way the Torah demands it to be. Our glasses that we put on are not Ray Bans, they're not, uh, I don't know, Versace, they're not, I don't know, what else they're, Prada, Mada, whatever, Torah, yeah? Our glasses that we put on, halacha. Oh, now I can see. These are the glasses that we put on. They help us see the world in a different light. We should use the eyes of halacha. It's dangerous if you don't. So that combination in the midbar, they didn't have to plant trees. They didn't have to do all that stuff. They came to Eretz Israel. Now they need to plant trees. Now they need to plant fields. Now they need to do deal with the chomer, with the with materialism itself. And now you need to be super careful not to lose alone. You need to create a balance, and that is the most dangerous act to to have. How do you balance? Because if you need to keep a balance and you don't. You create an avalanche. So the the beauty of Eretz Israel and the beauty of Halakha is that it has a tremendous talent and ability to connect between the materialistic aspects of life and the spiritual aspects of life. Famous machloket in the Gemara, right? About working all day, succeeding, not succeeding, I mean learning all day, succeeding, not succeeding, everybody, right? Many people try to do like Rabbi Shimon. To keep this balance is a very, very difficult thing to do. However, you cannot, you know, it's very interesting because people tell you, ah, you guys learn all day long, I'm going to work. Fine, I hear you, fine. But let me ask you this. Why when I tell you, hey, you work all day long, why don't you come to learn? Ah, that's, ah, ah, ah. let's well, do 50-50. You listen to me and I'll listen to you. As much as you tell me, let me tell you also. Which, which is, again, it bothers me. It bothers me because 
For us, especially in Jews, we make such excuses all the time. And I told you this a million times. In everything that you do, you would like to become the best. You would like to become the best driver, the best businessman, the best lover, the best cook, the best this, the best that. But in one thing you don't want to become the best is the best Jew. You think that, that you know, I, I know everything. Every Jew, listen, I received the Torah in Sinai. You received the Torah in Sinai. Well, we're buddies here. Habibi, no. I learned it. I became, it's, it's like, for example, who learned here physics in, in, in school, in high school? That's it? Only you guys? No, you guys didn't learn physics in school? You know what you're missing? Physics is wonderful. So imagine though you have a high school level physics, you know, education, and you come to argue with a PhD. You won't do that. I mean, he learned physics, you learn physics, right? We're all the same. Imagine I will come to argue, let's say, with Rav uh, Ovadia Yosef or Rav Moshe Feinstein. Like, hey, it's me at that shepo. It's a down. We're all the same. Wow, wow, I'm a rabbi, he's a rabbi. We're all the same, right? Wrong. But why don't we try to become the best Jews we can? And that, in return, creates a very unstable situation in our lives. We live lives who are extremely un. A, a, a balanced life and that has a speck to all that drifts through all our aspects of our life, through all our lives now HaKadosh Baruch Hu commanded to take water from the stone by talking the Dibu but Moshe hit the rock to take the water out Moshe understood that you have to hit the chomer, the sela, the materialistic aspect, you have to hit it in order for it to become, rabotai, pay attention, to become a stepping stone, a base for spiritual elevation. If you don't oppress and contain materialism, it would overwhelm you. However, if you contain it and you form it to the shape you want, it becomes a basis for your spiritual elevation. Without that, there's no chain reaction and materialism stays in its place and it simply overwhelms you and you can't go anywhere with it. It swallows you in. Hitting it, we create a movement here. However, in Eretz Israel, one should understand that the chibu, the connection, that's the difference between living outside of Israel and living in Israel. There's a big difference. In Israel, the connection is done without hitting it. The connection is done in a way of talking. The dibur. In other words, in Israel, it should be that spirituality leads materialism in its appropriate way more so than here. Here you have to hit it all the time. You have to contain that. You need to get a little whacking here all the time. In Israel, it's different. Therefore, Moshe Rabbeinu was commanded not to enter Eretz Israel because his conduct, the way he operated, the, the way he connected between shape and form and material formation and, 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 and essence does not fit Eretz Israel. It's different. And therefore, he didn't enter. That's why this act determined the fate of Moshe Rabbeinu not to enter. HaKadosh Baruch Hu could have gotten angry at Moshe Rabbeinu in many other ways. However, he didn't. Many other things could have done, or other things, not many, but other things could determine the fate of Moshe Rabbeinu not to enter. HaKadosh Baruch Hu said, ah, because of this you didn't enter, because of that you didn't enter, but no, only this aspect, and that is because the way he dealt with materialism itself. 
הרב קוק, עליו השלום, עם ספר אורות התחייה, says the following, כל שמקיף את המציאות בכל הדרגותיה, בהשפעה רוחנית, מוסרית וקדושה, צריך לטהרה יותר גדולה. Anything that is surrounding reality, in all levels of reality, when it's, we're talking about a spiritual influence, needs tremendous protection and tremendous purity. That's why the temptation that there is in Israel, or even here if you're holding a, a, a position that could contain materialism, let's say for example you're a rabbi, so you should be the spiritual envelope that wraps materialism. You must live out of the ordinary. You have to be super pure, super holy, and in Israel even more. And it's very sad to see this leader or that leader in jail, betraying with money, and powers, and this. Yes, his people put hats all over the place. But he's in jail. And what they say, oh, he's suffering, he's suffering for our sins. You know, reminds me of other people that die for our sins. Huh? Yeah, Custer. Custer dies for our sins, yeah. <laughs> uh, even Shop takes me, you know. Oh, they, they, you know. You need to be super careful with this. If the guy goes to jail, that's jail. Habibi, you went to jail, you stole money, you're, you're a leader of people, you stole money. Give back your certificate, hang your clothes, pour a pair of jeans, and move somewhere that nobody knows you. Can't do that anymore. Because your lack of ability Materialism, instead of you confining materialism, we need materialism. We need it. We need materialism. We need to eat, we need to buy clothes, we need to buy shelters, we need materialism. We need it. However, we need to confine it, as the Rambam says. Everybody needs to, to, to work. Even, you know, if you sit down and you do nothing, you become a, you become a thug. But how much should you work? The Rambam says, get you a job. They will, they will let you work a few hours at the end of the rest of the day is dedicated to learning. You need to wrap it. Right? If this materialism, this materialism, and that is spirituality, should wrap it. Oops. Wrap it. If not, Two fists. You need the chesed. You need the din. You can't have all chesed without din. You can't have all din without chesed. You need them both. There's a certain ratio. Let's say, for example, um, what do we eat with spicy food? I don't know. I eat many things with spicy food. I eat oatmeal with spicy food. But, you know, uh, what do you eat that is spicy? Chicken. Chicken. I said the chicken. How much harif, how much spicy stuff you put on the thing? A little bit. No, whatever, you know. But imagine you take a cup like this, right, all filled with hot sauce. You take a piece of chicken this big, you dip it in, you eat. It's a little bit, a little bit of harif to give it spice. And the rest, if you eat too much spicy food, what will happen to you? Your stomach will hurt. It's too much din. Too much dinim. And it's not good. So he said the following. Even in the Mikdash, the holy of all was all for connecting everything to us, or those who live on the lower level. And it says, 
and it says, Hello, called Divrei Keesh, Nayunu Mashem. My words are like fire. Ma Eshe no Mekabel Tuma, what fire is that receiving Tuma? Av Divrei Torah, and I'm Mekabelim Tuma. And we need to remember that. So therefore you cannot claim that you speak the Divrei Torah when you are immersed in actions that are not uh, pure, that are Tameh. That's why when you take the Torah and Oseh Bakardom Lachporba, when you take in the Torah and you make it into a vehicle to serve your own personal instrument, your personal demands or your personal needs, you are betraying the trust of Hashem. We should know that exile being in Galut, that depleted all the kohot, all the forces that we had in terms of emotional, in terms of, of understanding of everything we had. And however the, 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 the need or that uh, uh, desire that we have for materialistic things still is in place. And it's overwhelming us. That's why we need to connect ourselves to Kudusha, higher Kudusha, and demand for it immediately. Especially we are here in Galut. The biggest problem is that we will bring Galut, exile, and Galut and exile habits to Israel. That's a problem. If you live in Israel, listen, for example, I have nothing against uh, people who speak German. But if you want to speak Yiddish, speak it in America as much as you want. I don't care, I don't have a problem with this. You come into Israel, Leave the Yiddish outside. Don't bring the habits that you had in Morocco, in, in, in Poland, in Turkey, in Iran, as an exiled Jew to Earth Israel. Imagine people would say, hey, excuse me, we had a tradition. Two days we keep Pesach. Habibi, then Bechutz Laaret, Po Eretz Yisrael, Yom Echad. So, but when we are in Galut, we spiritually went down. The materialistic tendencies are still there. However, now they're erupting. So now we have to be very, very careful. And it says, and we need to be very careful with this now, being back in Israel, being back to, the, to, to Eretz Israel, to connect and to work hand in hand building the land building the country, not only with bulldozers, not only with tanks and airplanes, we need to make sure that we do so hand in hand with Torah, with spirituality, Jewish spirituality and halacha. So for those who in Israel who cry a separation of church and state in Israel, it is a wrong thing. And I say, even though nobody cares what I say, but I'll tell you anyway, Israel should be Medinat Halakha, should be a halachic state. The state of Israel being a Jewish state is or should be a halachic state. If for whatever reason there is other entities, and to that matter I'll tell you that, if the Ottomans ruled Israel, or the secular Israelis ruled Israel, here is a religious who should not be involved with it, because you live in Eretz Israel, and you are obligated, since you live in Eretz Israel, to the halakha, to be determined as the law of the land. Not something else. And to that matter, when you are in Eretz Israel, you live in the land of Israel. And you apply laws that are against halakha, it is worse than if a Turk would live in Israel and he would actually rule the country. It is worse. That's why Jews should not, observant Jews or Jews should not be involved with such endeavors. How can you sit in a government that allows you to be Mechalel Shabbat? You know how many stadiums are full with people, with tens of thousands of people on Shabbat watching 22 morons running after a ball, playing soccer, or what you call football, they call football, they call soccer, you know? Tens of thousands of people, Chilul Gadol, Chilul Shabbat Gadol, Beresh Galei. 
They fighting now to maybe try to stop public transportation on Shabbat. Why? People don't want it. They want to go to the beach. Habibi, that Be'eretz Israel cannot happen. And when we don't do it, we'll destroy it, unfortunately. We need to be very, very careful. Now, when Am Israel, the Gvura of Am Israel is coming out, that elevation, that Koach, has to be hand in hand with a spiritual Gvura. As much as the water of the world wanted, when Akadosh Baruch Hu wanted, they created them, they wanted to flood the world, Akadosh Baruch Hu said, Die! Even the biggest ocean ends at the shore. We must have the understanding that we are the land, and but we need the water, and we must have the halakha involved in every aspect of our lives here, and especially in Israel. And. Talking about the water, as we said in this parasha, many Mishnayot in Masechet Para deals with the, with, the, with the issue of how to guard those waters. That a person should not be Masiach Da'ato, you should not remove your intent from it while you're pulling the water, while you're putting the effort of the red, the red hafir inside, and so on and so forth. And we need to understand that the water without, a Chomer without Surah, However, the dot of the Adam, the mind, if I, if I, kept, if I, if I kept it, my dot is what gives surah, shape to the water. The same thing here. If, for example, I have a cup of water here, and I had in mind to drink it, so first of all, I could, if I said a bracha, I could continue drinking it. So it makes it drinkable for me. However, if I didn't pay attention to it whatsoever, and now those water became exposed, the asu mishum gilui, and I can't drink it. Now it was drinkable water, and I lost my sight, and it becomes undrinkable for me to drink. And it says there are those who says veikhu elecha para duma. Why we have to take the para el Moshe to Moshe in order to do as the Maharal says? The Maharal says tsura beli chomer. To Moshe Rabbeinu, we take the para and the water in order to give it the tzura, because the dat of Moshe, as we said, Moshe is b'chinat dat, will give the water its appropriate tzura. And the Gemara in Eruvim continue talks. We'll finish in a few minutes. The Gemara in Eruvim in Daf Nun Dalad Amud Aleph says the following: Amar Rav Matana, Mai Dichtiv Umidbar Matana, Im Masim Asa Adam Atzmo Kamidbar Ze Shakol Dashimbo Talmudo Mitkayen Beyado Veim Lav En Talmudo Mitkayen Beyado Mai Dichtiv Umidbar Matana Umatana Nachriel Nachriel Bemot And so on and so from here to there from there to here. אמר לה, אם אדם עשים עצמו כמדבר זה שהכל דשים בו תורה ניתנה לו במתנה וכיוון שניתנה לו במתנה נחלו אל שנאמרו ממתנה נחלי אל From the place called מתנה to נחלי אל וכיוון שנחלו אל עולה לגדולה שנאמרו מנחליאל במות ואם מגיס ליבו הקדוש ברוך הוא משפילו שנאמר ומבמות הגי ואם חוזר בו הקדוש ברוך הוא מגביאו שנאמר כל גי אינסה even when you learn Torah there is a certain way of conduct and the way to acquire it. You have to learn the Torah, you have to be mevatel yourself. And if you elevate yourself, HaKadosh Baruch will bring you put down in place. You want your Torah to be mitkayem and you go over it and over it and over it. And somebody once told me the Gdullah of Rav Avadia Yosef, everybody said, Ah, oh, the Gdullah of Rav Avadia Yosef, he knew everything by heart. It was the computer, it was this, it was that. Somebody close to him once told me, he says, the Gdullah of Rav Avadiyah Yosef Shalom was that he paid attention to any Dvar Torah that anyone said, regardless of who said it. If it was Dvar Torah published in some publication and who knows where, he read it and he paid attention to it and respected it as anything else, like as the Rambam wrote it or something like this. Because of that, Talmudo Mitkayem Be'yado. And the Rambam says, there are, and it says further, the Torah is, is the tzura, is the formation of the Chomer. When you learn Torah, 
and the Torah becomes a part of you, it changes your formation. Now you are not anymore Yoshua ben Reuven. Now you are Yoshua ben Torah. Now you become the son of the Torah. The Torah gives you tzura. It gives ruchniyut and kedusha to the person. Without spirituality, without holiness, you're not Adam. Sov davar akol nishma et Elohim yarevet misvatav shemor ki ze kol haAdam. A fundamental verse in the concept of Judaism. How do we do this? You have to dismantle yourself. You have to eliminate your selfishness. When a person does that, when he doesn't pay attention to his importance, I'm a big guy, I'm a hash of a guy, I'm this, I'm that, he becomes like water. You put the water in the cup, becomes the cup. You mevatel yourself, you'll get the Torah. If you are a vessel, you're not going to become the Torah. You know the famous Zen, uh, Mashal at the head, when the guy, whatever, met the samurai, and he said, oh, you're a famous uh, Zen master, I don't know, some, whatever it is, tell him, yes, I want to learn the tea ceremony. He said, Bechavot, come to learn to my sukkah over there, Rulen, the tea ceremony. The guy comes, you know, big samurai like this, you know, Toranaga Sama, like this, he comes. So he put the, the, the Zen master puts a cup, puts a cup over in front of him, he takes the, 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 tea, the tea kettle and he starts pouring the, pours the tea. And he starts overflowing. The guy says, hey, what are you doing? He says, I can, uh, you know, pouring your tea, but you're spilling it over. He says, the same thing with you. I cannot teach you a thing until you empty yourself up. If you learn Torah and you don't feel that the Torah actually resonates inside of you, does, does not live, you don't remember, and, and, and by the way, you are the, involved with the same shenanigans that you were involved beforehand. I'm going to tell you that. It's very simple. You fool yourself. Nothing could penetrate you. Yeah, you might have said in yeshiva, you turned a few pages and so on and so forth, but you were too self-important. So the Torah could not be mitkayim inside of you. When they say, Zot Torah, Adam ki amut ba'oel, you're like you're dead. You mevatel yourself. Then, mitkayim ba'oel, mitkayim ba'oel, eze oel, of course, o'ala shel Torah. 